The frame and fork are the two most important components of the bike since they color how the rest of your bike rides. When we upgrade our bikes, we're really just putting new components on our frame sets, but when we upgrade our frame sets, it's suddenly new bike day, even if the rest of the components are the same. The frame set isn't just the most important component of the bike, it is the bike. And when it comes to getting the best bike for your money, the question always comes up, is it better to get a nice frame set with more budget-friendly components or the opposite? better components with a more budget-friendly frame set. Because it often comes out to the same cost. I know it's tempting to blow your budget on a nice frame set like a Wabi Special because it's lugged Reynolds 725 lightweight steel and so you could ride the same bike that I talk about and love so much, but you'd be doing that bike and yourself a disservice if you're building it up with $30 eBay cranks, crusty wheels, and contact points that don't fit you that you found at the bottom of your friend's parts bin. Sure, the frame set is the most important component of the bike bike, but it's not more important than the rest of the bike combined. And Sean from Sacramento, we're actually neighbors, knew this when he built up his Fuji Feather, a basic frame set with his super nice components. This is hands down the cleanest Fuji Feather that I've ever seen and that you've ever seen. For Sean, having a nice bike is important. As you'll see, it inspired him to literally change his life. Now let's see how the components on the bike are more important than the frame set and how spending the money in the right places can give you a really nice bike for the money and can literally change your life in this fixed gear bike check. Speaking of components, this video is sponsored by Wobby Cycles. We all know that Wobby makes some killer lightweight steel frame set, but did you know that Wobby has a killer selection of track components. From H plus Sun wheels laced to your favorite hubs from Phil Wood, Suzu, and DT Swiss, to budget and baller cranks as from Wabi and Sugino, Wabi's got you covered to build the buttery bike of your dreams. Check out their dope track component selection, linked in the description. Sean writes, Hey Zach, first of all, let me thank you for all the things you do for the Fix Your Community and for posting a lot of videos to YouTube that have helped me so much in my journey. Without your help, you might have just seen me riding around Elk Grove on a Walmart Fixie. What can I say? Yeah, I'm kind of a hero. My life's purpose is to get people to stop buying bikes from Walmart. It started with a number, 225. Like many people who had nothing to do but sit at home during COVID, I quickly gained my COVID-15 and then some. Pre-COVID, I was around 185 pounds, and back in May 2021, I was 225 pounds and some change. Once I saw that number on the scale, I knew it was time for a change, so I picked up an old hobby I hadn't touched since high school, cycling. Although I never owned a fixed gear before, your videos made it very easy to understand the appeal, and I decided to give it a shot since I had always loved the way they looked. I looked on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace until I saw it, an almost new, hardly used 2016 Fuji Feather for sale by an older gentleman who had to get rid of it due to a knee injury. I managed to pick it up for $250, that is a great deal, my friend, and immediately fell in love with it on the first ride, even though I almost fell off the bike during the test drive. With the help of my new fixed gear, a strict keto diet, Diet and weekly rides to the gym, I managed to lose 57 pounds and I'm now sitting at a healthy 168 pounds at six foot one after three months. Holy crap, dude, you went from borderline obese to as fit as me in three months, and I've been riding bikes for 10 years. Mad props to you. <laughs> that is the power of having a bike that you love to ride. It will literally change your life. Being fit and being healthy goes from something that you have to do to something that you actually want to do. <laughs> After losing all that weight, I decided to upgrade my partner. That was the main source of my weight loss. At first, I decided I would spend $100 for every 10 pounds lost, but quickly realized that most of the parts that I wanted to upgrade would need other parts to go with them. Then I got bit hard by the upgrade bug and spent honestly way too many hours looking up parts that could fit my Fuji. Sean, you're officially a fixed gear guy. Welcome to the club. It's good to have you. By the end of the month, I bought enough parts to replace nearly every component on the bike. After I collected everything, I took my bike to Velotrap on your recommendation and I was not disappointed. Let's get some hearts in the chat for our boys over at Velotrap. Love you guys. I remember seeing Sean's Fuji Feather posted on Velotrap's Instagram and I commented, this is the hottest Fuji Feather known to man and I wholeheartedly mean that. Their work was flawless and all the employees were extremely friendly and only had compliments to say about my bike. And most importantly, I only had to wait 12 hours for my bike to be rebuilt from the frame up. After taking it home, I went on the first ride with my new bike with new Velosamba clipless shoes and I instantly knew what all the fuss was about and went on a 15 mile ride with a huge smile on my face. Today I still ride my bike to the gym around three times a week and whenever I have a day off. 
because every day I fall more and more in love with my bike. Once again, thank you for all the videos you post and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person one of these days and buying you a drink. Thank you for sharing your bike so I could get some free content and I look forward to you buying me a drink. The frame set is the part of the bike that everybody oohs and awes at, but even a basic Fuji Feather can be built up with mid and top tier components to give an excellent ride quality. Would a nicer frame set increase the amount of fun that you could squeeze out of this bike? Most definitely, but when you account for how expensive a nicer frame set is, you're much better off spending your budget on nicer components. The Fuji Feather is already a double butted 4130 Cromoly frame set with the potential to be a super fun bike to ride even for the biggest of fixed gear elitists. And if you take a look at the Fuji Feather for what it is, rather than its price tag, you'll see that it maintains touches of craftsmanship from the flat crown lug steel fork, a handsome Fuji head badge, respectably tidy welds, and an automotive quality paint job to ensure the steel is protected for years to come. Sean added a Mojo top two protector, decorative saddle pouch for good luck, and subtle Japanese print stickers to give this otherwise vanilla frame set some personal touches. Somebody that can read Japanese, please let me know what these stickers say in the comments. I'm really hoping that it says something like tonkatsu ramen with sesame seeds and green onions. For more utility, Sean straps on a Fairweather half frame bag to hold his kale chips and hard boiled eggs or whatever it is keto people eat on rides, while his PDW sparrow cage holds his bone broth bottle or whatever it is keto people drink on rides. You know what else is keto friendly? These beautiful vegan, organic, gluten-free tap water bottles available now at zackgalardo.com slash merch. Sure, the Fuji Feather doesn't have as many fixie points as a frame set that costs $700 and up, but you have to remember that Sean got a complete Fuji Feather for $250. A $700 frame set wouldn't ride three times as nice as a $200 Fuji Feather. And I'm saying $200 because that's about how much a Fuji Feather frame set is worth. They'd ride maybe 50% nicer, so you're not really getting a whole lot of bang for your buck when you're upgrading your frame set. For some people, that cost is worth it since we want the best riding bikes possible. But if you have a budget and you actually want to stick to it, it's a much better option to upgrade your components before your frame set. Plus, if somebody upgrades to a super nice frame set and builds it out with low tier components, us bike people, we know that they're just in it for the fixie points and they don't really know what they're doing with their bike. The contact points improve the way that your bike rides for the least amount of money. It's fun to drool over baller frame sets, wheel sets, and crank sets, but the handlebars, saddle, pedals, and tires are the unsung heroes of the bike and can be the difference between hating and loving your bike. It doesn't matter how fast your bike is if you hate riding it because it's so uncomfortable. A bike that you never ride averages zero miles per hour. <laughs> Sean won with the most comfortable standard drops on earth with plenty of usable hand position with or without brakes. The Nitto noodles and 44 centimeters attached to a Nitto Technomics one inch quill stem for a perfect fit. The keto friendly Brooks Cam BMC 17 keeps the rear super comfy even on longer rides and is the second most comfortable saddle that I've ever ridden with multiple centuries in jeans under its belt. This is one of the prettiest saddles that I've ever seen and it is a really darn shame that Brooks doesn't make it with the black and gum colored rubber colorway anymore. If you're gonna splurge on your bike, splurge on your saddle. Bad saddle is painful. It can even injure you while a good saddle is heaven. A sturdy yet elegant Nitto S65 Crystal Fellow Seat Post holds the saddle up in its impeccable black anodized finish. The Shimano SPD EPD M3242s were probably named by an AI, but the SPD clipless pedals strike an excellent balance between comfort, performance for high power efforts, convenience for walking around off the bike, and style, especially when paired with the understated Adidas Velo Samba SPD sneakers. With this contact point setup, this isn't just a bike, it's a place you want to be. A stiffer crankset and smoother drivetrain like these Dura A7600s with a matching 48 tooth chainring and Hatsa 9400 MJS bottom bracket will make the bike feel faster to accelerate and give it more top end when sprinting and climbing. A super nice frame set can also help to give those qualities, but not to the extent of the crankset because the drivetrain is the parts that you're directly pushing on to make the bike go, and you only indirectly feel the effects of your frame through your components. A Shimano dust cap protects the loose ball NJS bottom bracket from... dust? To ensure that it won't have to be serviced for at least like... 
four months. <laughs> a 16 tooth NJS Dura Ace Cog complements the 48 tooth chain ring for a whopping total of three whole skid patches. A matching Dura Ace lock ring ensures the cog won't slip during some six skids on said three whole skid patches. A clean silver and black Azumi Eco chain links the drivetrain together. Because why spend $80 on an Azumi chain when you can spend $20 on one? Wheels are another alluring component to upgrade because they make the bike look totally sick, which is why any of us are riding fixed gear in the first place. While you don't need a super baller wheel set like Sean has to make your bike ride well, the wheel set does color the way that your bike rides a lot. And a nice wheel set like these H Plus Sun archetypes, laced as saucy Suzu Pro Max hubs in black, can make your bike accelerate more quickly, be easier to pedal, give you better cornering, be more durable, and make you more attractive to prospective mates. Again, a frame set can improve these aspects of your bike, but not to the extent that wheels can, because wheels are, you know, the thing that makes the bike roll. Luckily, Wabi sells these wheels. But they are sold out at the moment because they're totally sick. And they're so sick that I ride a pair of silver ones myself. But you can get notified on Wabi's website when they're back in stock. The tires are the best upgrade that you can make per dollar. A puncture resistant, reliable, reasonably fast set of tires will cost you around a hundred bucks. And just by getting a new set of tires like these 28C Gator Skin Black Editions, you'll get way less flats. The biggest bummer on a bike ride, besides from dying. I've been riding gator skins on my own bike exclusively for the past four years and I only get a flat every four to five thousand miles. Nicer tires can also make your bike faster, more comfortable, and give you the ability to take that dirt gravel road that you see that avoids all the traffic. It's kind of nice. Tires are the only part of the bike that is in direct contact with the road, and because of that, they have a huge impact on the way that your bike rides. This is the hottest Fuji feather that I've ever seen, but you don't need to spend this much money on your bike to get a really great riding bike. Assuming that your bike fits you, these are the parts that I would upgrade in this order. The most important parts to upgrade are the contact points. The tires, saddle, pedals, and handlebars in that order. If you take a stock bike similar to what Sean had and spend $415 on the exact same contact point setup that he has, that is with the Velo Samba shoes, mind you, the bike would easily ride twice as nicely as it did when it was stock. Spend another $425 on the same drivetrain that Sean has, and the bike will be riding three times as nicely as it did when it was stock. But if you take the same $840 that Sean spent on his contact points and his drivetrain, and you blow it all on a super nice frame set, and then you just move your stock components over to that frame set, at best you'll be getting a bike that rides 50% nicer. If you're wondering what you should upgrade on your bike to get the best bike for your money, follow this upgrade path and you will be golden. But if you're on a budget, getting nice components definitely beats out getting a nice frame set. And if you want some nice components, this video is sponsored by Wobby Cycles. They recently really upped their track component game. You can get a lot of the components on this bike from wobbycycles.com, linked in the description. And if you want to have your bike featured in this bike check series, be sure to follow the instructions in the description. A fix these famous shouts to Mario Perez, Brandon Black, David K, Gio Dezera, Julian Corona, Ryan White, Scott Polongi, and Zane Kolnick for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.